Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. Let me ask you this. Uh, just flipping back into my childhood, uh, coming up in the streets, you know what I mean? We wore blue. Don't know why. We just wore it. We was in Texas. and uh, But my school color was blue, so we, we wore blue. It was not, I did not know. I, and my cousin was from Crenshaw, so we wore blue, you know, but didn't really understand it. But then we look up and right down the street from us in Shreveport in the 90s, they just start flying out of California, coming to Shreveport. And then we see this and we see them. And now we riding with them certain ones that wear blue. The ones that wear red, we, we're not rocking with them, even though there are some of them that's flying in, too. So they came in from California to Shreveport, which was 30 miles away from where I was raised up. Now, I was in the drug game at that time and I only rock with the guys who were messing with blue and this is how this is how it happened but we started seeing a lot of killings and a lot of different things on the news in Arklatex during that time and it was it got pretty rough and I think I think Cooper Road right now is, is one of the places where still stand true to the blue this happened and I don't know what made them start coming down there in the 90s. Do you remember that era? Or were you around during that time? Mm -hmm. I was in Monroe and uh, West Monroe. Oh, you was in Monroe. I was on the <laughs> run for a murder that had happened at a school campus in 76. And uh, my mama sent me to West Monroe. So I know about so Shreveport, you know about West Monroe, uh, uh, when they had a jukebox where you had to kick it to start it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my girl at that time was the only girl in the club and everybody wanted to dance with us. I never will forget it. I got out of there in two weeks. Wow. <laughs> yes, sir. But anyway, uh, uh, from my personal experience, and I knew some people that were going down there, uh, with the transformation of the drug game coming out and an influx of cocaine, uh, and the price was so high, because uh, uh, I had a friend named Michael Jordan that married Tootie Reese, the equivalent of Mickey Barnes or somebody, yeah. when cocaine was 55000 a key at that time. He married Rhonda Reese. And so I got to witness 78, 79, Ether Basin, and uh, they start uh, shipping out along with the gang members uh, and it started catching on. That was one of the reasons as far as Crips expansion, particularly in Colorado, because in the inner cities of Los Angeles, uh, Colorado University was getting a lot of youths, uh, letting them uh, uh, come out there on a scholarship and they started transporting back then to Ron, Sherry. Now, they also, a little bit earlier in the 60s, uh, Marv can speak to that one day when you interview him. Mm -hmm. It was hair run, but as far as the cocaine and the gang activity, it went hand in hand when they started fluctuating from out here because as of the day, everybody wants a plug in California. Yeah. Same thing as this, California, Florida, Savannah, uh, Houston, everybody always want a plug from Cali, and that's always existed. And so now, as far as I'm concerned, it just uh, had expanded, and uh, that changed the uh, landscape of a lot of uh, cities. Okay. Yeah, um, I definitely, um, I definitely, when I look at us coming up, at being young, and, and, and we did not have a clue of why we was doing what we was doing. We was... I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, we did. I mean, but but it still brought prison and everything else. People going to change and flock up with different groups, no matter what, I believe, you know, even. So before Cripping, before you even had associated with Crip, were there section groups of people that hung out and hung together and pretty much that's what they done? Well, really, before that, uh, it's on the West Side, you had cliques, groups of men uh, that ran together, Tookie. Uh, uh, Warlock, uh, Steve Goods, uh, uh, Buddha that got killed, Justin Baycott, uh, Eric Williams, uh, Ricardo Sims, Bud, uh, Bud, rest in peace, uh, Melvin Hardy, Monk, uh, 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 Joe Ransom. You had a lot of guys to where on the West Side, we were into integration, 69, 70. Uh, you could see Tookie standing at one end of St. Andrews Park and the white folks bowling on the bowling green at the other end. So we didn't have no history 
of uh, like the Slawsons, the businessmen, the farmers, or guys or gangs on the west side. There wasn't a lot of older guys. At the oldest might be 20. Other than that, there wasn't a lot of blacks over there because of the uh, integration that was going on. So the west side is uh, unique in that. So as they started the juveniles and they started mixing up uh, Henry Clay, Horace Mann, the Smacks, uh, 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 the cafe boys, uh, those at John Me and the junior highs, it started to expand and crystallize on the West Side. Then they went and ended up being formed as the West Side Crips. Cukes, Mouse, Rusty, Chucky, Todd, uh, 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 Odie Shaw, Odie Gill, Crest, uh, uh, Elmer Jones, Spy, uh, uh, Trey Ball, Melvin Hardy, James Miller. I could just name a lot yeah. of them that just uh, was in here early in the game and only uh, lost their life where they resting in peace or they resting in pain. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.